Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. On the show today, West African Economic and Monetary Union on track to see medium term economic growth of about 6%. Banks in South Africa accused of rigging round currency dealing to be punished if a report by the competition watchdog is true. Plus, Egypt's central bank leaves key interest rates unchanged as stock market rebounds. Let's get started and we begin with the markets and starting here in Africa. Egypt's market is closed today for the weekend but finished on the positive territory on Thursday ending a five-day losing streak. Now Egypt's central bank left its key interest rates unchanged on Thursday at a meeting of its monetary policy committee. Other major markets, um, that's NSC and JSC, were both trading in the negative at noon Nigerian time. Of course, Kenyan market um, was down on uh, was rather up on Thursday, 0.34 percent. In the Middle East, stock markets closed on a firm footing on Thursday, in line with generally upbeat global shares and stabilizing crude oil prices. Uh, Dubai's index urged up 0.16 percent in thin trade. GFH Financial Group, the most heavily traded stock, jumped 4.4%. And looking at those numbers um, there, Abu Dhabi was um, up 1.01% at 4,643.21. Dubai Financial Market was up 0.16%. Qatar was up 0.82%. And Saudi Stock Exchange was up 0.81%. And after a strong rally at the start of the week, investors in Europe seem to have paused for breath. European bosses were hovering around the flat line in early trade on Friday as investors eyed economic data and more earnings report. Let's talk to Ulrich Bartz, DWTV Channel's TV financial correspondent from the Frankfurt Stock Exchange. Good afternoon, Ulrich. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, it's... Um, Earnings, 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 and today we have the German insurers Allianz announcing a share buyback on Thursday evening and, of course, reported a 23% yearly rise in net profit for its last quarter. Now, talk to us about this buyback and how the announcement is driving Allianz shares today. The Allianz share is uh, the best in the DAX today, and it's uh, the, a top performer in Europe as well. It's going up by about uh, two and a half percent. This uh, buyback news, uh, good news uh, for the shareholders, uh, not quite unexpected because um, it is uh, the result of a three-year program, if you will. Allianz had three years to use part of the profits it generated in those years in order to buy something big, acquire something uh, and make something of it. Uh, if it didn't find a takeover target at a reasonable price, then the promise was that uh, this money goes back to shareholders in the form uh, of a buyback. And we know that Allianz um, did look at QBE, the big uh, Australian insurer, offered 14 billion for it, uh, apparently, mm, really nothing official ever having coming out there, but apparently the Australians not willing to enter into a friendly takeover discussion. So Allianz, uh, didn't pay any money and uh, now has to basically, uh, according to the regimen of this program, give the money back to the shareholders in the buyback, uh, reduces the number of shares. The profit, though, uh, remains uh, at the point it was, and so it's divided up into less shares, and so each individual shares become more valuable, the reason why the share is going up, the major reason why it's going up today. Well, having the Allianz shares go up, now looking behind you, one would wonder why the uh, DAX is actually tilting downwards. But let's look at um, the Deutsche Börse, of course, considering headwinds in its effort to merge with the London Stock Exchange, uh, that's LSE. You were at the press conference of the German exchange operator yesterday. What did the CEO, Carsten Kegeter, have to say? Yeah, surprisingly little. Uh, surprisingly little on those questions which are of uh, the most major interest to the public and uh, to the media there. Uh, and uh, the most interesting questions were, uh, how is the merger with London going through? 
And uh, what about the insider trading allegations against Karsten Kengeta, the CEO himself? Um, the major question in terms of the merger at the moment seems to be uh, the headquarters in London. And it, it's very, very probable that the local authorities here, the economics minister, of Hessen will say no uh, to a merger because uh, the, the, the headquarters is outside of uh, the EU, planned to be in London and not in Frankfurt. And he, he is said to see major difficulties uh, for the development of the exchange. And in that case, he can say no. We don't know that, but almost everyone you talk to here is assuming that. Kasten Kengeda said almost nothing on that issue, saying the issue is pending, I'm not going to do any remarks there. Big disappointment. And on insider allegations, well, he gave a personal statement saying that insider trading goes against everything uh, he stands for, but uh, he asked for, for patience and not having any questions on it. Journalists uh, asked anyways, and uh, he basically didn't answer any questions on that. He even didn't answer the questions on at what time would he consider resigning. He simply said, those are speculative questions that I won't address. Even that uh, went basically unanswered. Well, all right. Um, thank you for that update. But let's um, wrap up uh, the week. Give us a summary of the, what the week has been and, of course, uh, an outlook for next week. It's been a week with a lot of highlights. Uh, let me just uh, pick out the major two uh, that I see. On the corporate side, <laughs> Opel and Peugeot. Coming out of nowhere, no one having that uh, on, on their board. Uh, Peugeot, Citroën of uh, France, PSA, apparently wanting to take over Opel. And uh, there had been discussions on which even the local management here in Germany, the head of Opel, the CEO there, didn't know anything about. The politicians irate, workers irate. And um, it's a very big public uh, debate uh, that will probably ensue. Uh, here in Germany in the next couple of weeks as well, seeing it's an election year, and it's an election year in France as well, where Peugeot is uh, situated. Janet Yellen, the Fed chair, um, also surprising people, uh, opening the door for a possible rate hike in March until her speech this week uh, in front of the Senate, uh, Senate committee uh, in the United States. Everyone assumed March was out. She wanted to wait more for Donald Trump's policies to to become visible with their effect. No, uh, she wants to act early in order to prevent any running away inflation or, or running away uh, uh, economies that then the Fed would have to react too harshly to. Next week, I think a corporate wig, a big one, especially here in Germany, Bayer in the midst of taking over Monsanto, presenting results and presenting an outlook and also the world's largest uh, chemical company, BASF, also looking at 2016 and into the future. Two major developments next week. Right, we'll sure keep our eyes on Bayer. Thank you very much, Ulrich, for your time. Do enjoy your weekend.